Episode 141 of the Read to Lead podcast is brought to you by our friends at FreshBooks, offering a month of unrestricted use to you right now, totally free, and you don't need a credit card for the trial. Claim your free month at freshbooks.com slash read to lead and enter read to lead in the how did you hear about us section. I believe every person born has the capacity to be great. When you look around, history proves that there are many people that came out of obscurity and very difficult places to become great and to leave a lasting mark. Welcome to the Read to Lead podcast with Jeff Brown. Jeff believes that if you desire to achieve true success in business and in life, then consistent and intentional reading is a must. The Read to Lead podcast will not only help you narrow this ever important reading list, but also bring you key insights and valuable feedback from some of today's most successful and inspiring authors. And now, here's Jeff. Hi there, good day to you and welcome to the podcast that's dedicated to your personal and professional growth. We dig into leadership, of course, it's always central to our discussion, but we'll also talk about things like personal development, productivity, career, business, marketing, sales, and entrepreneurship, personal development, probably getting the emphasis today. In a moment, you and I will be joined by Brian Holmes, author of Four Cornerstones of Strategic Living, a proven framework for building the life you want with the tools you have. I'm going to be asking Brian about why he believes most people fail to leave a lasting legacy, what it means to live strategically, the concept of personal healing and why it's so critical to our well-being, and much, much more. And be sure and stick around to the end where Brian will have a fantastic and free resource just for us. And speaking of free, our sponsor, cloud accounting software FreshBooks, is offering a free month of unrestricted use to their service. In fact, one such listener to take advantage of that free month-long trial is a guy named Ernie Lansford. Ernie had heard me talk about FreshBooks before, but hadn't had a need for it until recently. Ernie, I know you haven't been using it very long, but how's it been going so far? I had my first client call me who owns a sales representative firm, and I coached him for about two hours at no charge because I was just helping him. Mm -hmm. And then he said, you know, I think we need to do this every other Tuesday for, for two hours. And you, you need to charge me for this. I said, you're, you're right. I need to charge you for that. And we agreed upon a price. And I said, okay, I got to thinking, how in the heck am I going to bill? What do I do? And then I remembered FreshBooks. So I signed up for FreshBooks and immediately after signing up, it helped me generate an estimate for this individual. And I also signed up for the uh, payments function mm -hmm. uh, so he can pay with his credit card and then send him an invoice. And life is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, to claim your free month from FreshBooks right now, just go to freshbooks.com slash read to lead. That's freshbooks.com slash read to lead and simply enter read to lead in the how did you hear about us section. One more time, that's freshbooks.com slash read to lead. Brian Holmes is the founder and president of the Strategic Living Institute, a life-changing organization dedicated to teaching people how to harness the power and potential God has given them. Brian's deep passion is providing individuals the opportunity and means to receive inner life healing, purpose-specific training and development, and the practical activation necessary to mobilize as leaders of cultural transformation. Now, Brian is a highly acclaimed speaker, author, and leadership expert. He is also the host of his own podcast, the Strategic Leader Podcast, and is a certified master coach and a mentor to people from all walks of life. His passion for building people and developing leaders is experienced by thousands around the world each and every year. His newly written book is called The Four Cornerstones of Strategic Living, a proven framework for building the life you want with the tools you have. Uh, I consider him uh, a friend, uh, a fairly new friend, but a friend nonetheless. Brian, welcome to the Read to Lead podcast, buddy. Jeff, it is an honor and a pleasure, and I'm so grateful to uh, be hanging out with you here today. Well, uh, the pleasure is all mine, trust me. I thoroughly enjoyed the book, and in a world where uh, a lot of uh, business books are in you know, 200 plus pages in length, <laughs> I have an appreci appreciation for a book that is nothing but meat. I, I love the stories that you share throughout the book, and, and that really helped uh, draw me in as well. And you start right off with a story. You talk about 
the pyramids and make the correlation between them and your four cornerstones. And I thought it would be great if here at the outset you could share that story to help us kind of set the stage for the rest of our conversation. You bet. Well, we're talking about the four cornerstones for strategic living, and it is a an analogy, a metaphor of kind of a word. Sure, but it's a great picture of the significance of cornerstones. And in the book, we talk about the Great Pyramids and how each of those that are still standing today were built on four cornerstones. A cornerstone is literally cut to perfection, mm-hmm. engineered, which is amazing so many thousands of years ago, engineered to create such a perfect plumb, a baseline for the remainder of the construction or building process. And ultimately, everything gets measured against that cornerstone. So it's, it's not just that a great edifice is built on a powerful foundation, and every, of course, great building is that, but it's also built on a surety of alignment. And so as we began to write this book and talk about these cornerstones, I felt like that picture of the, these great pyramids that are still standing today are a testimony to what happens when we build our life on cornerstones. Well, Brian, why is it your belief that most people end up with lives that that, that, that fall flat, or at the very least, uh, as you, I think, say in the book, uh, fail to leave a lasting legacy? Most of us, if not all of us, want to leave that legacy, but so many of us fall short of that. Why do you believe that is? We're conditioned from a very young age, Jeff, to ignore to hide, to stuff things away, to not necessarily resolve things. I think a lot of people today accept at face value the notion that our duty in life is to get an education, get a good job, or settle into a, some sort of a long-term career, do that for 40 or 50 years, and then retire. Hmm. I, I can't look around in my world and find anybody for whom that worked. <laughs> and so... What I have seen a lot of in, in the work I do as I travel around the world, there are a lot of people who have great desires, have great dreams, have all kinds of aspirations, but for whatever reason, they have set those aside. They've become content to survive and just get up every day and do the deal, and they do that over and over and over again, almost second nature And there's no real thought given to who am I, why am I here, from my perspective, why did God create me in this particular season of life, uh, this generation, if you will, what are the needs of my world and how can I make a difference? People don't tend to think about that in the context of who they really are. So I'm noticing that more and more younger people, maybe the millennials, some of my generation, your generation, are beginning to tap into those dreams, those desires, and a really clear awareness of, hey, there's something for which I'm created. I need to figure out what that is and pursue that because in doing so, not only will I have a successful, prosperous, and fulfilling life, but I will leave a legacy. I will leave something behind. I will have made a difference, and I will have passed on something of meaning. And is this, when it comes right down to it, how you define then what it means to live a strategic life? Living strategically to me is, number one, being very clear on your identity. Mm. Who are you? Uh, We talk in the book a lot about cornerstone number one, which we'll talk more about in a moment, I'm sure, but being fully healed, dealing with anything that's happened in the past, resolving it, putting it behind you, and being okay internally, understanding your strengths, figuring out where you add value. Here's a really important piece of living strategically is understanding and identifying your sphere of influence. Mm. There are some sectors of our society that I really don't have much to offer. There are others that I have a great deal to offer because of what is inherently inside of me by way of talent, skills, abilities, things of that nature. Uh, within that sphere of influence, you know, to identify a niche or a genre that is best suited for you based on how you're wired and what your particular talents are. And then, of course, strategically is building a literal written strategic plan for your business, your ministry, your foundation, or whatever it is that you have decided to pursue, and then executing on that. It's, mm-hmm. it's really living on purpose, but there's a lot of work on the front end of that. You mentioned writing it down. I've enjoyed uh, reading books uh, earlier this year uh, by Michael Hyatt and Daniel Harkavy, a book called Living Forward. 
uh, John, right. yeah, John Maxwell's uh, intentional living. They they both mention this uh, as well. Why do you believe so strongly in a written plan? Why is that so important? Well, Jeff, in my case personally, I write everything down because of my age. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm creeping on up there toward 50, and I'm finding that there are a few things that better get jotted down or I might not remember them. Mm. But seriously, cognitive science, of course, this is no secret to anyone who is in your audience, but cognitive science has proven for many years that taking your thoughts, the things that become clear to you in your mind, when you write those down and re- you review them frequently, that, that practice is literally a force multiplier, when it comes to those things that we write down becoming a reality in our lives, I think writing things down creates an unconscious yet very powerful ownership connection where when I write it, it's coming out of my head, out of the ether somewhere, and I'm putting it into a concrete, readable format in front of my own eyeballs. Mm-hmm. And, and in doing that, for me, I'm taking ownership of that truth, whatever that truth is. And also, I think you cannot effectively meditate on or visualize something that you've not written down. You need to clearly articulate what you're hearing, what you're feeling, what you're sensing, so that you can then make it a part of your concrete belief system by meditating on it, visualizing it, and so on. I liken it to uh, creating a budget. It's Dave Ramsey who says you need to tell your money where to go at the beginning of the month instead of getting to the end of the month and wondering where it all went. And I think we, we need to live our lives uh, in much the same way and, and not get to the end of the month or the end of our lifespan and go, why didn't things turn out the way I thought they would? Well, part of that's because we didn't create a plan. We didn't write it down. Well, for those that practice Dave Ramsey's methodologies, which I am one of those people, imagine if you applied the principle you just mentioned to the other area of your life mm. and what an impact that would make. Absolutely. Well, Brian says that our emotional, mental, and spiritual condition uh, becomes the ceiling for how far we can rise in life. That's a, that's a direct quote. Brian, talk about, if you would, the first cornerstone that relates to this. My experience is very few people talk about this. We talk about some of the other pieces on personal discovery, personal development, but personal healing is not often talked about, especially in the secular marketplace. Mm. Unresolved, unreconciled my terminology, unhealed areas of the heart or the mind do place a cap on our growth and development potential. We can look across the entertainment world. We can look across the sports world. We can see example after example of people that have immense talent. Some of them are the greatest in their sport, greatest in their field. But we see so often that these people who are incredibly talented and unbelievably successful reach a particular point in their life where everything falls apart. Mm. And if you look deep into those scenarios and really understand what's going on, you'll find that the cause for the effect is there are unresolved, broken places within the individual that have never been addressed or have not been quickly addressed. Mm. And Mm. those things at some point, Jeff, catch up with you. I'll give you my own story, just a quick backdrop on this. Uh, I was raised in a very Christian faith home, I had great parents, great home environment, a lot of good people around me. When I was 11 years old, I had a very tragic thing happen to me, and it, I guess it's okay to share this on mm. your program. I was molested by uh, an older lady, older mm. than me, and introduced to pornography by the same person. Now, if you understand cognitive psychology and, and the, the development of human thought and human beliefs, an 11-year-old does not have the physiological capacity in the brain to even know what to do with that type of thing. Mm. So it does get compartmentalized, and it does become embedded as a belief system. So I grew up from 11 years old feeling as though I was broken, I was dirty, I was not wanted. I had all kinds of guilt and shame and various things that I dealt with. And those things didn't just remain static. They they increased, they grew. It's like a root system. Once the seed is there, it begins to go down. And the older you become, the more rooted those things are and the more fruit they're bearing, albeit not good fruit. Mm. So I brought all of that brokenness, all of that into my marriage. First 11 years of my marriage to my beautiful wife, Sabrina, uh, just a very difficult time because I was operating out of brokenness. I was operating out of unresolved, unreconciled, unhealed areas. And the year 2000, just, uh, 16 and a half or so years ago, 
I was introduced to a program, and we went to that. And quite honestly, that program saved not only my my marriage, but saved my life because I was at a crisis place. I had so much internal hatred toward myself, so much disdain for my behaviors and my habits and my addictions, all the things that I was going through. Mm. And those mm. things began to show up in my work, in the ministry that I was doing, all the things that I was involved in. And so it was a, it was a crossroads. And at that place, thankfully, I found some of these truths that we talk about in this book where you've got to go back and resolve and reconcile those places that have not been addressed. And so that happened for me since that time. We've been sharing some of these healing principles with people, and it's a very real thing. Mm. At the end of the day, though, unresolved unreconciled things will literally cap your success, cap your progress, and can possibly destroy relationships, destroy businesses if not dealt with. Would you be at all open to sharing uh, more specifically some of the steps you took to get yourself to a place of personal healing or maybe more generally steps you recommend we take to get to that to that place? Oh, I'd be thrilled to do that. This is my greatest passion in all the work I do is to talk about this because I believe it's such a wide and broad need in our, our society. Number one, you have to acknowledge that there's a broken place. You have to own up to that. And that's not a confession of guilt or a confession of something's wrong with me. It's just saying, okay, this is a very real thing. Maybe something happened to you. Maybe something uh, disappointed you. Maybe you felt rejected. Maybe your parents divorced. There's a thousand scenarios we can mention here. At some point, though, you have to stop pretending as though it doesn't matter, and you've got to acknowledge it. Dr. Phil McGraw says you cannot change what you're not willing to acknowledge, Mm. and uh, so acknowledging is a big deal. Number two is confessing. Now, this is not a biblical thing I'm trying to promote here, although I believe in confession, but this is the act of bringing something into the light. As long as you're, you're stuffing it away, putting it in a, a filing cabinet somewhere, sort of locking it away in the archives, and in your own mind convincing yourself that this is not affecting me, then I really do believe that you're probably deceiving yourself. Mm-hmm. Confession is the, simply the act of taking something out of the dark, bringing it into the light, because it's in the light where you can now process and deal with it effectively. And from my perspective, I believe this is where we find the greatest grace and mercy to deal with these things uh, from uh, a God perspective as well. Third thing is resolve. You've got to have resolution, meaning you're going to feel the pain that you ignored 20, 30, 40 years ago. Embrace the pain. You've got to process through that, and you've got to choose. No matter what this feels like for a while, I'm not looking back. I'm going to pursue the healing that I need. Um. I think another thing is if there are individuals involved in the pain you were caused, you have to forgive those people and just let them go. Just release it. Uh, You cannot continue to hold on to the hook that's in you. Just let it go. Uh, Your unforgiveness, your holding on to that is not hurting them. It's hurting you. And then, again, I I hope I'm not mentioning this too much, but (laughs) I, I really do believe in the fact that God does help us with these types of issues. and. My particular faith perspective, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, if you believe in God, and I was this to your audience, then pray and ask God to give you the grace and the mercy to to find healing in that whole deal. And then, of course, you've got to be willing just to let yourself off the hook and then move forward. Once and for all, put it in the past, bury it, it's done, leave over it, but then move on. Those are a few things. Um, a couple of practical things, if you need a coach that can help you with those types of things, I believe it would be helpful to pursue that. Maybe a counselor, uh, maybe it's a pastor or a priest, someone that, or a rabbi, someone that you work with. But, you know, if you can't do this on your own, ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Those are a few things that I would recommend. Very, very good advice. Well, uh, Brian calls uh, cornerstone number two personal discovery. Brian, is it really possible that that no one born into any circumstance is absent of the capacity to be great, to do great things? When I consider that, it really does make me think. But the longer I think about the question, the more I'm convinced. I believe every person born has the capacity to do something significant, to make a difference, to leave a lasting deposit in their lifetime. And from that perspective, I believe that's a great thing. 
So yes, the answer is yes. I believe every person has the capacity to be great and to do something incredibly significant in their lifetime. No excuses. You heard it here first. No. <laughs> That's not to say that people aren't born into disadvantage. It's not to say that you won't have challenges. That's not to say that some of us maybe were born into a family that uh, the environment was more conducive to fostering that and others maybe less. Those things are all reality. When you look around, history proves that there are many people that came out of obscurity and very difficult places to become great and to leave a lasting mark. So I believe you can be great. Hmm. Well, going back to uh, a similar question I asked before regarding the second cornerstone, Brian, what are some specific steps that we can take to help us enter into the personal discovery process? This is really about determining or discovering who you are and why you're here. Hmm. Now, I know your name might be Jeff or your name might be Brian or your name might be Bob or Susie, but here's the deal. It's not about what your parents named you. It's about what's on the inside. How are you wired? What are your unique qualities that you were born with? And yes, I believe you were born with them and they develop over time. So things like personality profiles, understand your personality style, your dominant personality styles. This is nothing probably new to a lot of your audience, but it's very important to know how you're wired because that's going to give you an indication as, as to how you can communicate and relate to other people more effectively. Strengths assessments. I'm sure a book you're very familiar with and, and likely you've interviewed this person, but Strengths Finders 2.0. Great book, great tool. You, you buy the book, you get a code, you go online and you take this profile. Nails, it really nails your top five strengths uh, areas. And it's so revealing and so encouraging to, to be able to focus on areas of work, areas of ministry, areas of development that relate to how you're internally wired. Also, your governing values, the things you're passionate about, just identifying these things, going through the real process of, again, writing them down, doing the work, talent and skills, your abilities, your dreams. That's a big one. Most people toss their dreams, dismiss their dreams, set them aside, and they just never really go after them. But I say awaken the dream inside of you and, and go after the thing. Develop a strategic vision for your life and a strategic plan. All of those are steps in the process of personal discovery, and they're critical if you're going to really reach the pinnacle of your capacity and your value in this world. You know, I have a, a recent coaching client who does a podcast all about Strengths Finder, and I'll be sure to put a link to that in the show notes for those who want to check out Alyssa Nelson's podcast. It's great. Well, with uh, cornerstone number three, Brian says that uh, it takes just an hour a day. So, so Brian, explain this third cornerstone. It's one of my favorites. And uh, what are some of the ways that we can spend just one hour a day in pursuit of it? Well, personal development is one of those areas that, frankly, I'm intrigued by on numerous levels. One, it, when I was growing up, there was a huge industry personal development and personal improvement and all those types of things. You had guys like Paul J. Meyer and Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy and Les Brown, and the list goes on and on. And there was such a wave that happened during the 80s, the 70s, 80s, and even early 90s where people were plugged into investing in themselves and developing their, their minds, developing their skills, developing their sales capabilities, all those things. And for some reason, it seems to me, I've seen a decrease in that over the last 10 or 15 years. People will go out and spend $100 on a movie night, but they won't spend 10 bucks on a good book. <laughs> that blows my mind, especially among millennials. I think it's shifting. And so some of the things that I think we can do are, of course, first and foremost, you say this all the time, readers are leaders. Leaders are readers. Read, read, read. If it's, if it's a book, pick up a physical book. If it's a Kindle version, if it's an audible book, some book on audio, whatever it is, but be feeding your mind with information and content that is going to grow you in the specific area of your passion and your work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great to read all kinds of books, but I would say spend the majority of your time growing yourself in the area of competencies and emotional capacities so you can serve mankind better. So increase your knowledge base through reading, online courses, audio programs, Another big one is pursuing strategic relationships, Jeff. My gosh, man, the last four years of my life have been unbelievable. And it's been in large part due to two or three new connections I made around 2012. 
And those introductions opened a world to me, and that world has become now a, a platform for us to take a message of healing out there. My point is, is that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. We know that's true. Jim Rhodes said that years ago. The question is, if you're not growing, it might be an indication you need new relationships in your life. Mm-hmm. And if so, get around some people that are in an arena where you want to be and make relationships. Very important. Of course, you can really benefit by having a personal coach. Uh, I think every great leader has a coach, probably. Put yourself in growth opportunity environments such as conferences, seminars, things like that. There's just so many ways you can do this. It just takes intentionality. You have to do it on purpose, and you have to plan for it, and you have to budget for it. Mm. I have invested tens of thousands of dollars the last four years, maybe over six figures, because I want to invest in myself. And I consider it an investment and not an expense because I see an ROI on that investment every day of my life. Well, that brings us to the fourth and final cornerstone, deployment. All this is is great, of course, but it means very little, right, if we don't act on what we know. Talk about the importance of this final cornerstone, Brian. I think the greatest picture that I can paint regarding personal deployment is this. We have such beautiful, incredible men and women who serve in the military here in the U.S. of A. And these young people sometimes leave straight from high school, other times from college, and they go to boot camp. They go to their their initial training. They do their basics. Then they go to whatever their field of study is going to be. They do training there. And they do years and years of developing their skill sets, developing their knowledge, developing their tactics, all of these things. At some point in the career of that young man or young woman, they're going to receive papers. They're going to get orders. And they're going to be asked to leave the comforts of the training ground. And they're going to be what is called deployed, meaning they're going to take everything that is inside of them, all the capacity, all the knowledge, all the skills, their, their physiology, their strength, what developed for the job, and they're going to go get in the game. They're going to find themselves somewhere assigned to do what it is they've prepared. Another analogy is football. Mm. I mean, great. You make the team. You suit up. And you're on the sideline every game. But quite honestly, you're not doing the team any good unless you take the field and get hit. you got to get on the field. You know, play the game. And I know a lot of people who are conference junkies. They're online course junkies. They buy everybody's stuff. They do everybody's deal. But they really don't ever execute. They don't take action. They don't have their own plan. And they don't have accountability to help them to move into action. So personal deployment is fully engaging the process of doing the things that you were called to do, not just becoming the person you're created to become. And so it really is about the doing. You might not remember this, but there was a great industry leader in the insurance world several years ago, I think 1977 or 8, somewhere in there, named Art Williams. He fundamentally changed the insurance industry. And he did a speech one time called Just Do It. And by the way, that was before Nike created the slogan and the swoosh, just for record. But the point is, is that, you know, he went on to talk about how, you know, you can have all the best offices, you can have the best suits and ties, you can do all the deal, but you got to, you got to go do the deal. You got to go make the appointment. You got to go build that business. You got to go write that book. So this is all about doing what it is you are created to do. Well, if this has resonated with you as much as it has uh, with me, you'll be delighted to know that Brian has put the finishing touches on a Four Cornerstones online course, and you're not going to believe what he's going to offer to you as a listener to this show. Brian, can, can you expound on that? I'd be happy to. The Four Cornerstones course is kind of a deeper dive. It's taking this conversation to a much higher level, and there's five sessions where we unpack each one of these cornerstones and really help the the viewer, the listener, the student understand how they can engage the process of going through personal healing, personal discovery, personal development, personal deployment. And I would like to offer that to your audience as a gift, just to say, uh, I, I want to see you engage this process. My heart is not to to just talk about a topic that sounds good and maybe tickles the ear. I really My desire in my heart is to see people transformed, developed into the leaders they can be, and engaged in the areas of life where differences need to be made. 
So we want to give that to your audience and just say thanks. And by the way, I'm not sure I told you this on our first conversation, but I just put the, put the finishing touches on a personal transformation profile, which is a tool, a 15-page profile that uh, literally walks the person through the important questions to kickstart the process for them. Mm. And that's a, that's a paid item on my website, but I want to – whoever – uh, comes here for the course, we're going to make sure they get the personal transformation profile as well just to help them along the way. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's tremendous. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I can't imagine anyone hearing this not taking advantage of that right now. Uh, where, can they, where can they find that? What's the, what's the uh, URL? brianholmes.com forward slash read to lead. That's R-E-A-D-T-O-L-E-A-D, just like this wonderful, wonderful podcast. And uh, ju- we will just welcome you. Uh, come on over and uh, take advantage of that right away. Awesome. Well, I-, I know you mentioned a number of your favorite books, and you've hinted at some some of your favorite authors uh, during the course of our conversation. I'd be curious to know, uh, Brian, uh, and have you share those that you kind of go back to often, uh, maybe over the years, have have been ones that have had a huge impact on you and your career. There are three books or resources that I read every year. At least once. Oh, okay. Wow. Think and Grow Rich, The Richest Man in Babylon. And even though it's not, I don't think it's actually a published book. It may be. I always go through The Strangest St- Secret by Earl Nightingale. Mm. Those three resources just keep me mentally tuned in to where I need to be so I can become that person that God's made me to be. And I, I'm just, those resources are great. More recently, Essentialism was a life-changing book for me. It helped me to really offload some things that weren't important and focus on the things that were. Uh, I'm turning 50 in just a few months, Jeff, so uh, I read the book Halftime. I'm not sure if you've read that one by Bob Buford, but that book has really helped me right now. I have not read that. I'll have to pick that up. Uh, I, I was not aware of that book, but uh, now, now, I, now I am, and I'm looking forward to reading it. <laughs> yes, great book. Well, uh, obviously, you do uh, your share of public speaking, and one thing I like to ask just about every guest is for you to share uh, your tips for delivering a talk that is impactful and one that is going to to move people. Absolutely. I love training and speaking and working with audiences, and there, I thought about this question a little bit, and here's what I think I want to communicate to your audience. Number one, know your message. Hmm. Not just theoretically, but know it. Number two, live your message. Number three, communicate your message. And by the way, in that order, know it, live it, communicate it. Mm. Because when we stand in front of an audience to deliver something, I think it's critical that we're authentic, that we're very real. I think people can smell a phony a mile away. Uh, the truth is, you know, any decent speaker can talk about a topic. The question is whether or not their life is a testimony to that message. Mm-hmm. And so I, I guess what I would encourage your audience to do, those that aspire to public speaking, is know your message, live your message, and then communicate your message. Mm-hmm. That, that means I have to cancel all my future speaking gigs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on. I know better than that. <laughs> Well, Brian, this was a delight, and now I'm super excited about going through the course, assuming that that offer applied to me also. It's going to cost you. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Well, thanks for for your time. Really appreciate it, and and wish you nothing but success with the book and the course going forward. Thank you so much. Don't miss out on taking Brian up on those resources that he's offering to us today. Everything we talked about, resources and otherwise, can be found quickly and easily on the show notes page for this episode that will be at read to lead podcast.com slash 141 for episode 141 i encourage you to to network with brian he's on twitter at brian holmes live that's brian with an i holmes as in sherlock live on twitter if you have a question about the topics we talk about here on the show you would like to have answered on the show there's one of two ways you can do that you can shoot me an email jeff at read to lead podcast.com or go to read to lead podcast.com slash question and leave your question via voicemail well that's going to do it for this week i look forward to seeing you next time 
for the Read to Lead podcast. Thanks so much for listening to the Read to Lead podcast. As a subscriber, we challenge you to be more than just a passive listener. Become a vital member of the community. Visit us on the web at readtoleadpodcast.com. Until next time, remember, leaders read and readers lead. Oh, 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 oh,